Uh, in the last lecture, we were looking at some uh, elementary problems on multivariate analysis and uh, some problems on uh, multivariate normal distribution. Let us continue with these problems until we uh, solve all these problems. So, we are discussing this problem number 6 here, uh, where we uh, were given for the four-variate distribution, the mean vector given by this mu vector and the covariance matrix given by this uh, sigma matrix. Uh, we had, uh, let us see, we had completed the problem number A of this, that is we had looked at what is the covariance of A x 1 derived from that multivariate, no, uh, from that multivariate vector and covariance of B x 2 and also further what we had done was to find out what is the covariance between the two components A x 1 and B x 2. Let us now move on to this uh, problem number B of uh, problem number 6, part B of this problem. So, here we are trying to find out what is the joint distribution of A x 1 and B x 2 if we have the joint distribution x following a multivariate normal four dimension. Let us see how to obtain that. So, for this B part here, the given conditions are that, that we have x a four variate normal with a mean vector mu and a covariance matrix sigma, where this mean vector mu was as given earlier. So, that is 4, 3, 2, 1. So, this is 4, 3, 2, 1. We had this sigma matrix, the 4, 4 by 4 symmetric positive definite matrix, which was given by this particular uh, quantity here 3, 0, 2, 2. Then the other elements were 1, 1, 0. then it was 9 minus 2 and 4, 9 minus 2 and 4. So, this is a symmetric matrix. So, no need to write the lower diagonal part here. Now, what uh, in this problem we are trying to find out the joint distribution of A x 1 sub vector and B x 2 the second sub vector. Now, note that these uh, sub vectors were defined to be the following quantities that x 1 was given by this and x 2 was given by this right. And accordingly what we had seen is that the covariance matrix of x 1 sub vector was given by this 3 2 2 9 matrix and the covariance matrix of x 2 sub vector derived from this covariance matrix of x was given by this 1 0 0 4. So, this is what we have. Now, in order to find the joint distribution, what we will define is this whose joint distribution is required to be obtained B x 2. Now, here let me make it complete that this x 1 sub vector was let us see that was x 1 x 3. So, this was x 1 x 3 the two components and this x 2 sub vector is this x 2 and x 4. And what we had also obtained in the last lecture was covariance matrix of x 1 to be 3 2 2 9. and the covariance matrix of this x 2 sub vector was derived as 1 0 0 4. Right. Now, if you look at this z vector here, which is having this as the first component and this as the second component, then if we look at alpha prime z, now this is going to be linear combination of the elements of the original x vector. The original x vector is four dimensional x 1, x 2, x 3 
and x4 transpose. So, it is a 4 by 1 vector which is having a now a multivariate normal distribution. So, if we look at this particular alpha prime z now this is going to be linear combination of the elements of x only right. So, this is nothing but linear combination of elements of x. Now, x has got a multivariate normal distribution. So, by the definition of multivariate normality that x will have a multivariate normal distribution if and only if every linear combination is going to be a n 1 random variate and hence this alpha prime z which is nothing but linear combination of elements of x is going to be distributed as n 1. So, this is going to be distributed as n 1 this is true for every alpha in the appropriate space generated by this dimension of this particular vector what is the dimension. Uh, we may note that this a was given by let us see a is 1 by 2 and this b is 2 by 2 a was 1 2. So, this is 1 by 2 this b was a 2 by 2 matrix and hence the order of this particular sub vector is going to be 2 by 2 and what about this one. Now, this is going to be a multiplied by that 2 dimensional vector. So, this is 1 by 1. So, it is a scalar random variate. So, this z has got the order that it is 3 dimensional and hence this alpha that is what we are taking for checking whether it is a multivariate normal distribution is this alpha belonging to r to the power 3. So, for every alpha belonging to r to the power 3 this alpha prime z nothing but a linear combination of the elements of the x vector the original 4 dimensional vector is going to be n 1. So, this would imply that this z vector which is 3 dimension is going to be a multivariate normal 3 dimension with expectation of z and the covariance matrix of z right. So, let us now find out what is this expectation z and this covariance matrix of z that will actually complete this particular problem. So, expectation of this z vector is nothing but expectation of this particular element out here. So, that that would be given by a times expectation of x 1 and this is b a and b are non stochastic matrices. So, this is going to be given by this particular element. Now, expectation of x 1 and expectation of x 2 are simple to be obtained. We had expectation of x vector to be given by this. So, if x 1 is x 1 x 3 then expectation of x 1 would be 4 2 that particular sub vector. So, here what we have is the following where expectation of this x 1 sub vector is the corresponding elements from there. So, that is 4 2 and expectation of x 2 sub vector similarly that is going to be given by 3 1 because the elements are 2 4. So, that this is 3 1. So, this what this is what is the expectation vector of the z random vector. So, let us denote that by mu z. So, this is by plugging in the value of the a vector b matrix expectation of x 1 as given here and expectation of x 2 as given here one can obtain what is explicit uh, form of mu z. Now, the last thing that we need to compute is covariance matrix of this z vector. So, what is that? So, if we look at this covariance matrix of z covariance matrix of z is the covariance matrix of this blocks a x 1 and b x 2. So, this would be given by we I think we had obtained uh, this term earlier. So, this yeah the covariance between the two a x 1 and b x 2 is going to be a sigma uh, or rather the covariance between x 1 and x 2 which was given by this and this is the b transpose matrix what that is what we had. So, using those what we can write here is that the first block would be the covariance of a x 1. 
So, that is going to be a times covariance of this x 1 sub vector times a transpose this is going to be b the covariance matrix of x 2 sub vector multiplied by b transpose and then this part is the covariance between a x 1 and b x 2. So, that this is a times covariance of x 1 sub vector with this x 2 sub vector that multiplied by b transpose and this is just the transpose of this particular entry sigma 1 2 out there. Now, we have already computed the constituent elements of this a covariance matrix of x 1 into a transpose was given here. So, this is covariance of a x 1 which is a covariance matrix of x 1 a transpose which is given by this and we had also obtained covariance matrix of b x 2 which was this particular element here which was this particular element and furthermore we had this covariance between a x 1 component and b x 2 component given by this and hence we already have all these elements already computed are already computed. So, that we can denote this particular term by this sigma z matrix. So, that we have the joint distribution this would imply that the joint distribution of a x 1 and b x 2 is multivariate normal given by this z vector which is a x 1 sub vector b x 2 sub vector that is follow that follows a multivariate normal three dimension with mu z as its mean vector and a sigma z as its covariance matrix which is the desired joint distribution as what was required in this particular problem out here right. Now, the c part of this problem is that with the same assumption as what we had made for the b part of the problem that is a four dimensional multivariate normal with the, the given mean vector and the covariance matrix sigma find the marginal distributions of x 1 and x 2 and the conditional distribution of x 1 given x 2 is this particular quantity. So, this is the c part of this problem. Now, we have x following a multivariate normal four dimension with mean vector as mu and covariance matrix as sigma. Now, x 1 is a sub vector derived from this x here and hence this is going to be a two dimensional normal distribution or a bivariate normal distribution with mean as mu 1 sub vector and a covariance matrix as sigma 1. Now, we have already obtained these elements. So, this mu 1 is equal to expectation of this x 1 x 3 sub vector which we have already computed and a sigma 1 is the covariance matrix of x 1 which also we have computed. So, this is basically the marginal distribution of x 1. Similarly, x 2 the sub vector which is comprising of the second and the fourth element in this x vector that is also a bivariate normal distribution with mean vector as say mu 2 and covariance matrix as sigma 2 where this mu 2 is expectation of the second sub vector x 2 and sigma 2 is the covariance matrix of the second sub vector sigma 2 is the covariance matrix of x 2 sub vector which once again both these elements we have already computed. So, these two are the two marginal distributions of the two sub vectors x 1 and x 2. The last part is to look at the conditional distribution. This conditional distribution of x 1 given x 2 sub vector as 2 1 
So, this is what we are trying to find out. Now, in the theory lectures, we have uh, seen that if we have uh, such a partition, then this x 1 given x 2 equal to small x 2, the given specified vector which is 2 1 for this case is also a multivariate normal with the dimension of the dimension of this x 1 sub vector which is being conditioned by the other sub vector. So, this mu 2 would be given by uh, this uh, multivariate normal 2 dimension will have a mean vector as mu 1 plus sigma 1 2 sigma 2 2 inverse x 2 minus mu 2. So, this is going to be the mean vector corresponding to this multivariate normal by variate normal here and the covariance matrix say it is given by sigma 1 1 dot 2 where this sigma 1 1 dot 2 is given by sigma 1 1 minus sigma 1 2 sigma 2 2 inverse sigma 2 1. Now, these uh, partitions are nothing but actually the following where sigma 1 1 is the covariance matrix of x 1 sub vector that is the notation sigma 2 2 is the covariance matrix of the second sub vector which is x 2 and sigma 1 2 is the covariance matrix of x 1 and x 2 and sigma 2 1 is just the transpose of that sigma 1 2 matrix right. So, if we have these the elements then what we are having was actually this joint distribution of x 1 x 2 rearranged vectors actually rearranged elements uh, forming into the new vector and the conditional distribution x 1 given x 2 equal to small x 2 which is this one would be given by this particular multivariate normal distribution with this as its mean vector and this as its covariance matrix. Now, note that we have already computed mu 1, we know what is sigma 1 2 that is the covariance between x 1 and x 2 sub vector, sigma 2 2 inverse is the covariance matrix of x 2, we have also obtained that x 2 small x 2 is this particular vector 2 1 here, mu 2 is the sub vector it is better to use a similar notation. So, that uh, this mu 1 if that is the sub vector corresponding to the first element, this is the mean sub vector corresponding to the x 2 x 2 sub vector. So, we know all these quantities and sigma 1 1 do, dot 2 can be computed from here because sigma 1 1 is known to us, sigma 1 2 is known to us, sigma 2 2 inverse and sigma 2 1 is known to us. So, that completes this particular problem of finding out the conditional distribution of x 1 given x 2 equal to this 2 1. Let us now move on to the next problem. We have x a two dimensional normal with a mean vector mu and a covariance matrix sigma where mu is given by 2 2 and sigma is an identity matrix of order 2. A is this vector of 1 1 and B is a vector 1 minus 1. Now, we the problem is to verify whether A x and b x are independent or not. Let us see how to solve this particular problem. We have this x vector a two dimensional normal with a mean vector mu and a covariance matrix i 2 where this mean vector is having its entries as 2 2 entries as 2 2 and a is 1 1 and b is 1 minus 1. So, we have a as 1 1 and b as 1 minus 1. Now, the two quantities in which we are interested in is a x and b x. Now, what can we say about a x and b x? Now, a x is going to be a normally distributed random variable, it is going to be an univariate normal because this is uh, a 1 by 2 vector rho vector and hence this is going to be distributed as an univariate normal distribution and so will be the distribution of b x, but that is not exactly is important in order to uh, verify whether the two random variables derived from the random vector x are independent or not. 
the thing that would be of interest is to look at what is the distribution of z. Now, let us define this z as a x and b x. Now, what is going to be the distribution of this particular z vector? Now, we can write this as a b times this x vector. So, this is some c matrix. Now, what is the order of this c matrix? A is 1 by 2, b is 1 by 2 and hence this is a 2 by 2 matrix. So, this is a 2 by 2 matrix c times x. Right? Now, x has got a multivariate normal distribution. In the theory lectures, what we had uh, proved is that c x also has a multivariate normal distribution. So, no need to uh, look at it uh, fresh and then take li linear combinations and argue that every linear combination of that has got univariate normal distribution and hence uh, the joint distribution would be multivariate normal. So, this is going to have a multivariate normal distribution with mean vector as expectation of C x and the covariance matrix as the covariance matrix of this C x which we can obtain very easily. What is that? So, this is going to be an n 2 with C times mu as its mean vector C is that matrix and mu is this vector of 2 2 and this is going to be C sigma, sigma is uh, this I 2 matrix. So, C I 2 C prime right. So, this z vector which is having A x and B x as the two constituent elements. So, this is a two dimensional random vector which is having these two the two quantities in which we are interested in that has got a multivariate normal distribution. So, since it has got a multivariate normal distribution in order to see whether they are independently distributed or not well one can actually look at the joint distribution or rather the distribution of z and then try to find out uh, if the joint distribution of a x and b x is in the form of the product of the two respective marginal distributions, but that is a cumbersome way of uh, checking uh, well this is simple in this particular problem, but a better way would be to look at since uh, we have got the joint distribution to be multivariate normal if we just compute what is the covariance of these two elements if the covariance is 0 then the two random variables are going to be independent because we have the joint distribution to be a multivariate normal distribution. So, the thing of interest would be to look at what is the covariance of A x and B x. So, the covariance of A x and B x would be given by A covariance matrix of x that is I 2 and then B transpose. Right? So, this is the covariance between A x and B x. Now, let us see what is this equal to. So, this covariance of A x and B x is given by A sigma. Now, that sigma is what we already have as I 2. So, A I 2 B transpose. Now, A was given by what 1 1 and B was given by this 1 minus 1 1 1 then this is I 2 and this is 1 minus 1. So, this is 1 1 1 minus 1. So, it is 1 minus 1 and that is equal to 0. So, since we have the covariance between A x and B x equal to 0 and the joint distribution of A x and B x to be a multivariate normal distribution that would imply that A x and B x are independently distributed. that completes this particular problem. So, this is done let us look at the next problem. Uh, we have these x i's i equal to 1 to n are independently distributed multivariate normal distribution with mean vector as mu and the covariance matrix as sigma. We are trying to find out the distribution of this particular quantity where these a i's are real constants. So, let me try to look at how to solve this problem this is problem number 8. problem number 8 is what we have as x i's following n p with the mean vector mu and a covariance matrix as sigma. 
i equal to 1 2 up to n are independent n p distributions. Now, the quantity of interest is a i x i i equal to 1 to n right. So, we are trying to find out the distribution of this particular quantity summation a i x i. Now, let us denote this by a vector y which is just the linear combination of these this actually is the result corresponding to the univariate uh, result where we have we know that linear combination of any univariate normal distribution is also having a univariate normal distribution. So, this basically is that actually this is the linear combination of n independent multivariate normal distribution. So, that is also going to be having a multivariate normal distribution. Now, how do we prove that this is going to be a multivariate normal distribution and, and what are going to be its parameters. So, this is this y is having the same dimension as the dimension of x. So, this is a p by 1 vector. So, for every alpha belonging to r to the power p this alpha prime y is nothing but alpha prime of this summation a i x i i equal to 1 to n. So, this is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n a i alpha prime x i right. Now, each x i is having an univariate normal distribution. So, this alpha for every alpha belonging to r to the power p as what we have taken this alpha prime x i is going to be an univariate normal distribution. So, this is going to follow an n 1 for every i equal to 1 to n and for every alpha belonging to r to the power p. So, each of these distributions for every alpha and for every i in this summation are going, uh, going to have a distribution which is univariate normal and hence the linear combination of those univariate normal distribution is going to be an univariate normal distribution. So, this follows n 1. So, what does that imply? for every alpha belonging to r to the power p this alpha prime y has got an n 1 distribution. So, this would imply that this vector itself from the definition of multivariate normality that this y, y vector will follow a multivariate normal distribution n p with expectation of this y as its mean vector and the covariance matrix of y as its covariance matrix. So, in order to complete this problem what we would require is to find out what is expectation of y and what is covariance of this y vector. So, expectation of this y vector is nothing, but expectation of this summation a i x i. Now, each of these a i's are multivariate normal p dimension with a mean vector as mu vector. So, that this is nothing, but we can take expectation term by term. So, we will have this as expectation of each of these x i vectors and each of them remember has got identical distribution which is uh, that mu vector. So, this is each one of them are going to be mu vectors. So, what is this? This is going to be given by this mu is thus constant irrespective of the ith component and then this is summation a i this i is from 1 to n. So, this completes the first part of it this is this component expectation of y computed. So, let us look at what is covariance matrix of y similarly. So, covariance matrix of y from its definition is expectation of y minus expectation of y vector into y minus expectation of y transpose right. So, this is equal to expectation of summation a i x i i equal to 1 to n this minus this particular quantity which we can write as summation a i times this mu vector i equal to 1 to n and then the transpose of this particular entry out here. So, that this is of the form that it is summation a i i equal to 1 to n x i minus this mean vector mu that 
multiplied by its transpose. So, it is a i x i minus mu whole transpose. Now, if we take expectation of the products that would come from this particular expression, they are going to be the following. So, let us just uh, look at this in a simple way. So, this is a 1 x 1 minus mu. So, that is the first term in this uh, n term summation out here and this is the last term a n x n minus this mean and then we will have the n terms corresponding to this entry out here. So, there are n entries out here. So, we will have this as a 1 x 1 minus mu its transpose plus the last term which would be a n x n minus this mu transpose right. So, we are going to take expectation term by term for the entries of this particular product. Now, let us see what is going to happen if we take expectation term by term. If we look at the first entry here, now remember that x i's are independently distributed. So, the first term here when it is multiplied with all these n terms here, what happens to the first term is the following that it is a 1 square into expectation of x 1 minus mu into x 1 minus mu it is transpose. Now, the second entry here this element multiplied by all the rest of these n minus 1 entries here will lead us to 0, because x i's are independently distributed and hence the covariance between x 1 and x i for i uh, not equal to 1 would all be equal to 0. So, there will not be any contribution when this element is multiplied with the rest of these n minus 1 entries on the second quantity. Now, the same thing is going to happen if we look at any entry from here and then we will have only the corresponding similar entries from the two uh, giving us non-zero contribution. So, what we will be having when we take expectation term by term in this particular product is that the first element when multiplied by all these elements and then expectation being taken only the first entry is non-zero which is given by this and all the rest of the n minus 1 entries will be all zeros. And the same thing is going to happen when we look at each of these n entries here the one corresponding the same element corresponding to this when expectation being taken over it is non-zero and similar entries will come up. And so, the co entry corresponding to the nth term where this one multiplied by all these n terms only the product uh, expectation of this particular product is going to remain which is uh, going to be given by a n square and then the covariance matrix of a, uh, x n which is nothing but the sigma matrix which we started. So, this is x n minus mu into x n minus mu it is transpose all the rest of the entries will be zeros. So, this each of these entries now are sigma matrices because we have x 1 x 2 x n uh, i i d as normal multivariate mu sigma. So, each of these entries are sigma and thus this is nothing but summation a i square i equal to 1 to n times this is a scalar constant that multiplied by this sigma matrix. So, that is going to be given uh, that is going to be the covariance matrix of this y vector which completes the problem where we have obtained that this linear combination of these multivariate normal n i i d is having a multivariate normal with expectation of y given by this and the covariance matrix being given by this. So, let us move on to the next problem which is problem number 9 in this problem set. So, this is this where we have x a multivariate normal distribution three dimension with this as its covariance matrix where rho is actually lying between strictly lying between minus half and 1. Note that this particular range of rho would be required in order to ensure that this sigma matrix is positive definite right and we are trying to find out what is the joint distribution of this x 1 plus x 2 first, ele first element x 1 minus x 2 the second element. Now, this is very straightforward from what we have already solved the problems. So, this is problem number 9 we have x the three dimensional vector to have a multivariate normal distribution with the mean vector as mu and a covariance matrix as sigma where sigma is given by let us see that is 1 rho 1 1 1 and rho on the all the off diagonals. 
So, this is with a restriction that minus half less than rho is less than 1 this would ensure that this is positive definite. And what we are trying to find out is the following the joint distribution of x 1 uh, plus x 2 and x 1 minus x 2. So, let us define this vector y to be x 1 plus x 2 and this is x 1 minus x 2. Now, it is straightforward to see that this can be expressed in this particular form. So, if we keep this x 1 x 2 here then by pre multiplying that with the matrix 1 1 and 1 minus 1. So, this is what is the quantity of whose joint distribution we are interested in finding out. So, this is what this is a sub vector say x 1 where x 1 is having the two quantities x 1 and x 2 as the two entries. Now, what is the distribution of x 1 what can we say from the distribution of this x which is three dimensional. Now, x 1 is the sub vector which is having the first two entries in this particular random vector and this is a sub vector of a multivariate normal distribution. So, that itself would be having a multivariate normal distribution a bivariate normal distribution here with the mean vector as the corresponding expectations expectation x 1 as its first entry and then expectation of x 2 as its second entry this is expectation of x 2 and then the covariance matrix of x 1 x 2 the x 1 sub vector would be derived from here. So, that this is 1 rho rho 1. So, that is simple let us denote this by mu 1 sub vector and this by sigma 1 matrix. So, let us have this particular notation going with n 2. So, that we will have this x 1 random vector to have this distribution and then we are interested in finding out the distribution of y and that is trivial. So, this would imply that this y which is a x 1 will have now what is the dimension of a a is a 2 by 2 matrix. So, this is a 2 by 2 matrix and hence this vector bivariate two dimensional vector would having uh, would be having a bivariate normal distribution with mean as a mu 1 and the covariance matrix as a sigma 1 a transpose and that is the solution because a is given by this mu 1 is this particular part here and this sigma 1 is given by 1 1 rho rho right. So, this is the desired joint distribution of this x 1 plus x 2 as its first entry x 1 minus x 2 as the second entry of this particular random vector. So, this completes the proof of or rather uh, solution of 9. Let us now look at the solution of problem number 10 and 11 which should complete the problems of this particular set. Uh, what is problem number 10? We have x a multivariate normal two dimension with this as its covariance matrix we are trying to find out what is the distribution of this particular quantity. Uh, let me carry forward uh, this information what sigma as its covariance matrix and where sigma is 3 2 2 2 sigma is 3 2 2 2. So, this is a positive definite matrix and we are trying to find out mu is any vector that may be specified uh, y is x 1 square y is. So, we are trying to find out distribution of y equal to x 1 square plus 3 by 2 x 2 square plus uh, minus actually minus 2 x 1 x 2. So, this is minus minus 2 x 1 x 2. So, we are trying to find out what is the distribution of this particular uh, random variable. Now, note that this is actually a quadratic form quadratic form in the components of this uh, random vector x. So, we actually would write it in the way the quadratic form results uh, in theory were actually presented. Uh, note that this particular quadratic form can be written compactly in the following form that this is x 1 x 2 which is x vector nothing but x vector 
and then the following matrix which is having the square entries corresponding to x 1 is 1 corresponding to x 2 is 3 by 2 and then the off diagonals are going to be x 1 x 2 terms. Now, that is going to be half of each of these terms. So, that x 1 x 2 product had a coefficient minus 2. So, that is divided equally into the two off diagonals and then this is x 1 x 2. So, this is nothing, but of the form that it is x transpose a matrix a is a 2 by 2 matrix that multiplied by x. So, this is a quadratic form the type of quadratic form results for which we have actually done in the theory lectures. So, we are trying to find out the distribution of this. Now, remember what uh, the type of result that we had actually proved in theory is that I will just put it in a bracket to, to recall recall the following result that if x follows a multivariate normal with a mean vector mu and a covariance matrix sigma and if we have a a real symmetric matrix then x transpose a x I will say that will follow a chi prime square with rank of a as its degrees of freedom and non centrality parameter as mu prime a mu if and only if a sigma is idempotent. So, this result can be used in order to solve this particular problem that is what we had this random variable expressed in the terms of this quadratic form that is using this result our y random variable which is expressed in the form that it is a transpose a x will follow chi prime square with rank of a as its degrees of freedom and mu prime a mu as its non centrality parameter if and only if the a that we have defined this is our a and this is our sigma if and only if this a sigma is idempotent. Now, it is easy to see actually that uh, this a where this a is what we had obtained here as 1 3 by 2 minus 1 minus 1 1 3 by 2 minus 1 minus 1 and sigma is the variance covariance matrix which is 3 2 2 2 it is easy to check that this a sigma that is what we have is idempotent is idempotent as a sigma into a sigma is equal to a sigma one can easily verify this by simple matrix multiplication and hence this would imply that our random variable y which was that quadratic form follows chi prime square with rank of a as its degrees of freedom and mu prime a mu as its non centrality parameter. Now, what is rank of a? where rank of a is rank of this matrix 1 3 by 2 minus 1 minus 1. It is easy to see that this is of full rank and hence this is of rank 2 and whatever be the mean vector specified then that would actually lead us to the explicit form of this non centrality parameter. Otherwise, we have y this random variable a chi prime square on 2 degrees of freedom and the non centrality parameter being given by mu prime a mu where a is given by this matrix and mu is the main vector right. So, that solves this particular problem we will look at the next problem which is problem number 11 this is y following a multivariate normal n dimension with x mu as its mean vector and its covariance matrix as i n 
where x is n by p matrix of constants and mu is a p by p vector of constants. Then we are required to find out the distribution of this quadratic form. Let us see how to get this problem done. So, this is what is our given condition. So, y is an n dimensional multivariate normal with a mean vector as x mu and i n as its covariance matrix. Now, we are trying to find out the distribution of y prime i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose times y right. So, the question is to find out what is the distribution of this. Now, this problem once again is in line of finding the distribution of quadratic forms because this is a quadratic form. So, we can denote this particular matrix by a matrix A and then verify whether the conditions for this quadratic form to follow a chi square distribution are satisfied. Now, the variance covariance matrix under this setup is I n. So, this y prime a y this y prime a y will follow a non central chi square on rank of a as its degrees of freedom and now the mean vector corresponding to y is x mu. So, that we will have this as x mu transpose a x mu as this as its non centrality parameter if and only if now since sigma the associated variance covariance matrix is i n we will require the condition that this will follow a non central chi square if and only if a is idempotent right. So, let us see whether that condition is satisfied for this particular quadratic form and what is the rank of a in under such a situation and what happens to this non centrality parameter x mu transpose a x mu. So, this matrix a in the present situation is our i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose. So, what is a into a that is i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose into i n minus x x transpose x inverse. So, this is basically the projection matrix. So, this multiplication readily will actually lead us to observe that this is nothing but i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose which is nothing but a matrix. So, this would imply that a is idempotent in our case. So, this quadratic form which we have here will follow a non central chi square as of now. Uh, we will compute what is rank of a and what is this non centrality parameter in order to complete this particular problem. Now, a is idempotent. So, what we have is rank of a is rank of our i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose. So, this rank is equal to trace it is an idempotent matrix. So, that we will have this as x transpose x inverse x transpose. So, this is trace of a minus b. So, it is trace of a minus trace of b. So, we will have this as trace of i n minus trace of x x transpose x inverse x transpose. So, that this is equal to n minus now trace of this quantity is trace of x transpose x transpose x inverse into x transpose x. So, this is an i p matrix. So, that this is equal to n minus p, where p actually we assume that x is having full column rank x matrix uh, what we had in this problem was n by p. So, we assume that x is of full column rank that is rank of x is p and under that condition x transpose x inverse is a p by p matrix which is non singular and hence this is i p and this is n minus p. Now, what happens to the non centrality parameter? We were supposed to have the non centrality parameter as the following non centrality parameter was this x 
mu transpose A, A is our I n minus x, x transpose x inverse, x transpose x times mu. Now, take this x transpose from the left hand side and x from the right hand side. So, pre multiplying this particular quantity with x transpose and post multiplying by x, what we will be having is the following that this is mu transpose and then this is x transpose x minus x transpose x, x transpose x inverse x transpose x that multiplied by this mu vector. Now, what is this equal to? This is equal to identity matrix of order p. So, that this is finally equal to x transpose x minus x transpose x only that multiplied by mu prime and hence this is equal to 0. So, the non centrality parameter of this quadratic form y transpose a y is equal to 0 and hence we can finally write the distribution of the quadratic form in which we were interested in. So, this y transpose i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose y this thus follows. Now, the non centrality parameter being 0 implies that the non central chi square is actually a central chi square. So, that we will have this as a central chi square random variant with degrees of freedom as rank of a and rank of a we had derived as n minus p and the non centrality parameter vanishes. So, this actually is the desired distribution of the quadratic form in which uh, we were interested in. Now, as an application of this particular result, we will see that suppose we have a multiple linear regression problem, multiple linear regression setup, where we have y equal to say x beta plus epsilon with the assumption that epsilon follows an n dimensional multivariate normal with a mean vector as a null vector and a covariance matrix sigma square i n. This is the standard setup for a multiple linear regression problem. So, in such a situation this would imply from the assumption on epsilon that this y also follows a multivariate normal distribution n dimension with a mean vector as x beta and a covariance matrix as sigma square i n right. Now, in under such a situation what we usually look at is the following form which is the residual sum of squares denoted by R s s at the point beta hat the least squares estimator, but before that let me just uh, for completion sake write what is the least squares estimators. The least squares estimator of beta the linear regression parameter vector is given by this beta hat which is x transpose x inverse x transpose y. Now, if we look at the quantity which is y minus x beta hat transpose y minus x beta hat. So, this is the residual sum of squares at the least squares point. So, we can replace this beta hat by this x transpose x inverse x transpose y. It is easy to see that this form here reduces to this y transpose i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose y x transpose y right. So, if we have this to be the quadratic form we see that we are of course, interested in finding what is the distribution of this particular residual sum of squares which is given by this it tallies with the quantity of interest in the problem that we had this y transpose i n. So, this result actually can the previous problems result can be used to derive the distribution of this. Now, with just a bit of caution that we are looking at this y transpose i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose y when y follows x beta 
multivariate normal n dimension with mean vector as x beta and a covariance matrix as sigma square i n right. So, if we are looking at the distribution of this with y following this the only point at which this derivation of the distribution of this differs from the previous problem that we have just now solved is that the previous problem was solved under the assumption that the covariance matrix of y is i n and this has got a sigma square term present in it. So, in order to find the distribution of this what is usually done is to look at y prime i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose this divided by sigma square y. Now, considering this particular element as the matrix A, we will be able to show that this A times sigma which is this sigma square i n. So, that we will have this to follow a chi prime square on a rank of this A matrix and a non centrality parameter to be given by this x beta transpose this A matrix times x beta if and only if our A times the sigma matrix under this situation which is sigma square i n is i important. So, if and only if i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose by sigma square this is our A now A times sigma which is sigma square i n is idempotent. Now, as we see that this sigma square term can cancels out and what we have the condition for chi square distribution is that i n minus x x transpose x inverse x transpose is idempotent which we have already proved in the previous problem. So, that this really is idempotent and hence this is going to follow this particular term this divided by sigma square is going to follow a chi square distribution the non centrality parameter once again would vanish and the rank of this uh, a matrix would be rank of this as in the previous case it is going to be n minus rank of x which is if the full column rank is assumed that is going to be n minus p once again. So, the previous problem result is actually applicable in finding out the distribution of this quadratic form which is the residual sum of squares uh, uh, with beta being replaced by beta hat the ordinary least squares estimator the distribution of that to follow a central chi square on n minus rank of x degrees of freedom would follow from that particular previous result. Mm -hmm.